Hello everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's. Welcome to our Thursday morning coffee. I, you know, I usually have water, but <laughs> I hope you're having some, uh, a good morning this day or an evening if you're coming in after work. I am ready to help you do some fun little techniques today on the new Janome M17. Now, this is a brand new sewing machine, and I know there are many of my um, customers out there and, and those of you that are watching this for quite a while that probably don't have this machine. I want you to stay with me anyway, because what I'm doing is I'm trying to show you some technique that are, it's very quick, it's very easy, and I think you can really do it on any machine. I just happen to have this machine here, and I thought it would really be fun to show you. Let me give you an idea of what I'm going to do. This is a jacket that I have, and it's a um, black and white jacket. It's kind of fun. It's got a little bit of a flare to it. It was made mostly on a serger, and it does have big buttons on it, which is kind of fun. But I usually wear a red top underneath it, and I wanted to do something on the sleeve. And Nick, I don't know if we can get this up here real close, but I want you to be able to see, where do you want me to put it over here? It's a little tiny ladybug. And look, it's on the sleeve. The sleeve is not very wide. And then look at the other sleeve. Another one is over here. I'm going to show you today, maybe you don't want to do a ladybug. Maybe you want to put a little monogram or maybe you want to put another ladybug, you know, a male and a female, although they might be different colors. But I'll put another one on here for you because I want you to see how to do an embroidery design on a sleeve. We're going to start because it's very tiny. I'm going to start with a four by four hoop. And you can see, um, if you've watched my, my uh, videos for quite a while, you'll know that this is perfect stick. And this was the first one I did. It was right in the center. And then I just moved the design down. I didn't want to have to um, re-hoop it because the design is very small. Then I can do another one over here, over here. I could do a whole bunch of these. And that's what I'm going to do today. So let's get started with this. We've got the fabric in here. I am going to start from the very beginning of this machine exactly as if you've never used the machine before. If you look at the back of the machine here, you can see that this is um, the uh, laser pointer. And I want to know exactly where that needle is going to hit because this is a little tiny bu bug and I want to be able to put it exactly in one spot. And that laser point will show me the middle of the design. It's the easiest thing there is to do. So let's get started by turning the machine on. There's a little lever over here on the right. I'm going to turn it on. This beautiful screen will come up. It looks like an iPad. Actually, it's just incredible. I've never seen a screen like this. It says remove the hoop because I don't really even have it on. I'm just going to say OK. And pretty soon this um, screen will come up because <clears throat> I've already been in. It says, do I want to do embroidery? No, I don't. I'm going to go back to home because that's usually where your machine is going to come up. And you have three different categories. Oh, dear, I'm going to get out of that. Let's go back to home. And my finger is too fast. There should be a stylist over here. There we go. And that stylist is really the best thing to use. It works very, very well. This is ordinary sewing application mode in embroidery. And we're going to do embroidery. Even if you're doing this on a quilt, you would still go to the embroidery mode. Now we have this big screen where the design is going to come up. <clears throat> so I'm going to touch the design that I would like. And I'm going to touch the hoop that I would like. If you look here, it shows that this is a 3.9 by 3.9 inch hoop. Down here in your settings, I already went into settings and changed this to inches because I think a lot of our customers relate better to inches, although I use metric when I'm sewing, when I do regular sewing, but when I do embroidery, it's nice to have the inches. So this little tiny ladybug is very, very small, so I've got it in a very small hoop. Now, the next thing I'm going to do after that is I'm going to go find it. It was over, it's not that one because that has too many colors. I want just the black and white one. It's this design number 103. And see how it's thinking right now? Keep uh, hands clear, the hoop will move to the center position. Okay. 
And again, this is the hoop four by four that goes on the machine that I'm gonna use for this tiny little hoop. And you can see, this is the reason that I bought this machine personally myself. But look at how this slides in. And now listen to the click. It's perfectly in. Talk about easy, I'm gonna take it out again. Look at how simple. Just gonna slide it back in here where that little black area is, and then give it an extra little click, and it's done. Talk about beautiful. And you can see, if I put a white piece of paper, oh, this is pretty sticky yet, so I don't wanna get it down too far. And I touch this little button right here, it shows exactly where that needle's gonna drop. And that was the middle of the design in the hoop. Can you see that real well? <clears throat> and the first time that you use this, you can, you have a little move hoop that you can calibrate it to make sure. And if I bring this needle down, you can see it's perfect. It's absolutely where it needs to be, where that little light is. And that, that's all I need for this design because it's a little sticky here. <laughs> I pull it off <clears throat> because I want to have that little ladybug right in that area. So now what I'm going to do, I would like to have this little ladybug that's up here. Maybe we should flip them around a little. I'm gonna put her right here, right at that spot. That's where I want the, and you see this, this um, stabilizer is very sticky. So do you see how I can move it down? Again, it's gonna be a very small, if I were doing a big design, I would base around this, and you could do that on this machine too, but I really don't need to do that because it's just going to be a very small thing to do. You now have these little points on either side here. Right. Yeah, this will move it to the left. This will move it to the right. Oops, I did it. I'm going to go back. This will move it down a little, which I'm going to do. This will move it up a little, which I don't want it to do, so I'm going to bring it back down again. <laughs> And you see that, that little crosshatch there is exactly what is over here. Just a great, great way to do it. Okay, so we are all ready to go ahead and start embroidery, but what else do we have to do? Of course, we have to look at our threads. The number one thread to use, the first one and the second one, there's only two colors on this, a black and a red. What I love about this is that it's got a, um, a great, there's a, there's a little thread stand here, and I'm just going to flip it. Whoop, there the thread stands come up. And then this is a wonderful stand to hold your threads. I'm going to put this in uh, thread stand number one. Now, there is a holder that I could on, put on the back, but it really, it's fine. I'm just going to do a little bit of sewing with it. Now, <clears throat> watch the numbers. One, I'm going to go in this two. If I went into this two, that would be for winding the bobbin. I want to go into the two that's going to be doing the sewing. And all I'm going to do is follow the numbers. Two, three, four, down here, five, up here, six. And now there is something that I need to do. <clears throat> this is the little something I want you to watch real carefully. Do you see how I'm putting it behind right here? Let me get my stylus in here. I hold my thread with my right hand and I pull this and I have to pull it all the way across. See how it, it went now all the way across? Can you see that black thread there? It's the best, if you just do it part way, you're not gonna thread the needle correctly. And I'm going to do an automatic needle threading. So we are almost ready to thread the needle. This has two screens. There's a screen here and a screen over here. On this one, I only have to, I'm looking for the lock key because it's gonna raise the needle bar to the right position for the uh, thread to go through the needle. And that's the, the, the coolest thing I've ever seen. But watch what happens when I touch that key. It locks it. So you do see now this little light that's on the needle here, that's where the thread is going through the needle. That's the little bar that you want to. So you see the screen is locked. That means that the needle bar is in its highest position right here. And then when I go to touch this, now watch, watch what happens here. Perfect, perfect needle threading every time. Why is that so important? Do you know what I'm talking about? Those of you that have needle threaders, how many of you at home, and I know there's a lot of hands or just clap or raise your hand or whatever you have to do there. How many of you at home have bent your needle threader? I, everybody has at one time. I know I've even done it. 
because you know why the needle bar has not been in its highest position, and when you go to thread that needle, that little hook that goes through the needle gets bent because the needle is either too high or too low. This lock on this machine puts it in the exact right position. And you know it's gonna be perfect if this little light is on. So I can take that lock off. My little ladybug is over here. It says start, stop. Because this is a very tiny design, normally I would put water soluble topper on. I'm not gonna do that right now. I just went ahead and started the design. I want you to see it, it's really cool. It's hard to see the black because the, the little ladybug is black. But you see how I'm not wasting anything on the uh, stabilizer? And again, I could do another one here, another one over here. I could do them all over the place. And the first stitch, if you focus on the screen here, you can see, and I just put any color black. They have a Janome color or use whatever you've got in your black thread. I like this Floriani thread, it works really well. And you can also see that it's almost done. See how it's going along in the bar? There's a little bit more to do over on this side. Almost done, because we're at 489, 87, and we're going to 533. When the design is finished, the um, thread will cut. There, we're done. Let me show you how I take this out. I'm going to release this. That's how simple it is to take the hoop off. And then I am going to, you can see this little ladybug right here is stuck to the fabric because that was the stabilizer. And see how I'm just pulling it out with my thumb? I go around it. Let's go around to the top. I don't want to pull too much out because I, remember I want to use this again. I want to put another little ladybug. Say I wanted to do a quilt uh, design, <clears throat> a quilt block, and I wanted to put these little ladybugs, like three or four in one block, it would be very, very easy. I'm going to do another one because this jacket lends itself to beautiful design work, and I'm gonna put something on the front that I think will really give you a great idea of what it will do. <clears throat> Before I leave you, I'm gonna show you what a carbon hoop looks like. You know, those of you that are getting ready for it's Christmas in July, I know it's almost September, but I hope some of you have been doing your Christmas in July designs. This is gonna be an actual Christmas tree and then there'll be a little package down at the bottom, but look at that beautiful lettering. This is the carbon fiber hoop that doesn't break and it's very easy to bring it in and out. And say I popped it out of the hoop, which you know I could somehow, and I wanna put it back in, the laser light will make it perfectly easy for me to Rehoop if that would happen to come out. Again, little tips. I hope they've helped you. Thank you so much for watching us. Again, we have these machines at our store. I hope you'll come and visit us and see them. We're getting ready to do a wonderful event, a quilt week. We're trying to bring one of the um, Janome educators from Australia in. I don't want to give you the time exactly because we haven't quite solidified it, but when we do, I will let you know. Thanks so much. Have a great week. See you next Thursday.